I'd like to continue the message that we were on this morning. I didn't get finished, I just quit. And uh, you ever watch a show and it's great, it's really interesting. You're right on the edge of your seat. Uh, it's such a wonderful program. And then all of a sudden, they flash on the screen, to be continued. Whew. Well, that's one of these. It's a wonderful message from the Word of God found in Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. While you're turning to that, one other announcement. I need to see uh, Gabriel Maynard following the service tonight. Uh, make sure you see me before you leave. I'll let you wonder all night what that's about. But. <laughs> Psalms 103, 1 through 5, the benefits and the blessings of the believer. Don't you wish you uh, mingled and were around more people that were blessed? You know, many, many times I'm around people that are grouchy that are complaining, that are critical. And so finally, I bought a sign and I placed it on my desk because uh, I felt that would, should be the last place that anybody would be critical or complaining. And I made sure it was right in the pathway of attention to people coming into my office. And it says, be nice or be gone. <laughs> and so far I've not had to interpret that. Most people are nice. I've had to remind a few that that was the pastor's office and they were to be gone. No room not to live a blessed life if you're a believer, according to the scriptures. Stand with me as we read the, these five verses. Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Heavenly Father, help us to recognize, remember, and realize how blessed we are in Christ. And therefore, not to give in or get down to defeat, uh, discouragement, despair, or depression. We're a called out people. We're a separate people to lift high the wonderful praises of God. Help us to live like it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. May God add his blessings to the reading of the word of God. Why should the believer be happy? Why should the, the Christian know that they're a conqueror? Because of the benefits that we receive from the Lord. We have escaped the fear of hell. If you're a born again Christian, you're not going to hell. There'll be no saints in hell. Hell was a prepared place for the devil and his angels. But because of the rebellion of man, 
it hath enlarged itself to meet many people at their coming. Sinners, backsliders, hypocrites, those that are not living right, those who have not received Jesus Christ. But if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, you have no fear of hell because Jesus walks beside you and you're sheltered safe within the arms of God. Luke's gospel tells about two people dying, a rich man and Lazarus. The rich man did not know God and used his resources and substances to please himself. He fared sumptuously every day, had anything and everything he wanted in this life. But it all goes back in the box. And he died. And the Bible said, in hell. I don't know what they do with that uh, when they proclaim there is no hell. That's not what the Bible says. It says in hell, he lifted up his eyes being in torment and seen Lazarus in Abraham's bosom and said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he may come to me and dip the tip of his finger in water for I'm tormented in this flame. Father Abraham said, Son, remember, in your lifetime you made a choice. You live the way you wanted to live. And now you're tormented and Lazarus is comforted. And besides this, there's a great gulf fixed and he can't come to you and you can't go to him. Hell is everlasting. It's permanent. You don't want to go there. And he said, well, Father Abraham, if it's too late for me, if I'm condemned to be punished eternally in this place of hell, I've got five brothers. They're headed the same direction. Please send somebody back to preach to them and tell them not to come to this place of torment. And Father Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He said, they won't listen to them. They won't go. They won't hear them. But if one rose from the dead they might change their way of living you know what Father Abraham told him he told him right neither would they be persuaded even if one rose from the dead do you realize God gave his son Jesus gave his life he rose from the dead, sent the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart and mine so that we wouldn't come to this place of torment. And yet many blaspheme and grieve the Holy Spirit by the way that they live. But not the believer. We don't have to fear when we die and our families don't have to wonder where we went. We've escaped the fear from hell because perfect love, God's love, casts out fear. I will fear no evil for Lord, you're now walking with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You've prepared me a table in the presence of mine enemies. You've anointed my head with oil. My cup runs over. Oh, well, surely goodness and mercy will follow me 
all the days of my life. And when it's over, one day I'll go to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'll have no fear if Jesus walks beside me. For I'm sheltered, safe within the arms of Almighty God. The second thing, blessing, or the fifth, really, if you count this morning's, the fifth thing that the believer has is an endowment with the Holy Ghost presence. I'm not sure I'm capable tonight. I read the Bible every day. And I don't read a few chapters, I read a few books in the Bible before I start my day. So I know what it says, but I'm not capable probably tonight to preach to you and explain to you how important it is as believers for us to recognize and realize we've been endued with the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's better than knowledge. It's better than power. It's better than money. It's better than position. It's not by might nor by power but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Ye shall be endued with power from on high. The way you live this Christian life is when you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. Jesus said, it's a necessity that I go away. It wasn't a necessity for him. He was talking about for you and me. If I don't go away, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, will not come. Oh, but you see, when I go away, I'm going to send him unto you. I love those words in the scripture, when he has come. <laughs> oh, what a difference it makes when he has come. Do you ever see anybody that didn't have the Holy Spirit try to teach or preach the Bible? They're as dry as toast. Burnt toast. But have you ever seen anybody that you knew was called? and anointed by God, preach and teach the scriptures. You wouldn't have it any other way as a believer. And when you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit comes within you to lead and guide and direct you and to never leave, never fail, never forsake, and never forfeit you to the devil. Amen. Now, he wants all of you. He gives you all of him. But until you wait and are endued with power from on high, after the Holy Ghost comes upon you in baptismal power, he does not get all of you until you come to the place in your spiritual life that you recognize and realize, wait a minute, it's not me, it's him. And I submit and I surrender all. And he cleanses your heart and endues you with the fullness of his spirit and his presence. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And we have that as a benefit and a blessing as a believer. When I first received it, 
I was very lame as to how to express it. But the older you get in the faith, the more established you become. And whenever the Holy Spirit comes, as a rushing mighty wind, it blesses you. And sometimes you overflow. You can't help it. You get so blessed. I often wonder when people say, well, preacher, why uh, don't people shout and cry anymore? I think, well, they're not blessed. When you get blessed, you have to tell it. When you get blessed, you have to show it. It manifests itself in some way. The benefits and the blessings of the believer is the endowment with the Holy Ghost presence and power. How blessed we are to have that. Another thing, it eliminates the fear of the past, present, and future. I'm realizing as your pastor just how strong the devil uses fear in your emotions and in your minds to discourage, defeat, and depress you. Fear that we'll never get over the past, the way we were raised, what we didn't have. The fear of the present about physical pain or financial loss. And God knows if you watch the news, and I do, if you're not grounded in the Bible, you go away with fearing the future. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind and a faith unfeigned. What do you mean, preacher? He wants to replace your fears. Are you listening? He wants to replace your fears with his faith. And one of the benefits and blessings of the believer is that he establishes us in the faith. He establishes us in the faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. By faith, the elders obtained a good report. It is impossible to please God without faith. We must trust Him. We must believe in Him. We must be established, rooted, grounded, settled, strengthened, sustained in the faith. The just shall live by faith. Is that the way you're living? When troubles come, when trials, when tribulations, when he doesn't tell you why, when you have to face things that you thought he might remove and didn't. Here's what Job said. After his friends had forsaken him, his children had been killed. His wife told him to cuss God and die. He said, though he slay me, yet, yet, I will trust him. He can do anything and everything he wants to me, but I'm going to trust him. You know what? Job didn't know it, but you know what God had told the devil? 
do anything you want to do to Job. He loves me and he trusts me. And you can do anything you want to to except you can't take his life. I won't permit that. I won't allow that. So, uh, whatever doesn't kill you (laughs) makes you stronger. This too shall pass. And last of all, but not least, the benefits and the blessings of the believer, the expectation of going to heaven. I'm reminded of that every day. I've got a dad up there. I've got a mom up there. I've got uh, so many of my friends told Brenda today every time we get a call that one of our friends has passed. I said, honey, we've got just about as many friends in heaven as we have down here. And one of these days that call will come for me and you. And I'm going to answer. My heart's not troubled. I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. One day when Brenda was uh, stealing our grandson through giving TJ money and buying his supper, and we met him at Mount Sterling and picked him up, and we were on the way home. And out of the clear blue sky, he said, Mamma, do you know I have a couple of brothers in heaven? Brenda hesitated for a minute and she said, yeah, I know that, Logan. He said, Mama, I'll get to see my brothers when I get there, won't I? And she said, you surely will. Let me leave you with this. Is there somebody in particular that you can't wait to see when we all get to heaven? Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessings and the benefits you have left us that bring blessed assurance to our faith tonight as believers. Help us when we have tough times to just sit down and count our many blessings and name them one by one. It may surprise us when we do that to Lord what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shake hands with everyone. You're dismissed.